Okay, so now that we have the theorem, we can define what a conditional expectation is. So given a variable in L2 of omega sigma p, what we call the conditional expectation of x given sigma naught is t of x, the new random variable that is sigma naught measurable that exists thanks to theorem 1.01. And the notation we will use is this one, expectation of x given sigma naught. Okay, so let's look at an example of what a conditional expectation is and how you compute it. So the example is going to be about tossing a fair coin twice. So as probability space, I'm going to take omega to be the product of a two-point space with the point called H and T with itself, obviously um, both component describing the result head or uh, tail of uh, one toss of the coin. As sigma algebra sigma, I'm going to take the entire power set of omega. And as a probability measure, well, there's four points in my space omega, and I'm going to assign probability one force to every single one of them. So probability one force to uh, the singleton HH, same for the singleton HT, and then um, same for the singleton TT, and same for the singleton, which one am I missing, TH. Right, so this is my setup. I'm looking at these two tosses of one fair coin. Now, my sub sigma algebra sigma naught is going to describe what happened after the first um, toss. So I'm going to put in it, well, the empty set and the full space, because if I don't put those, I don't have a, a sigma algebra. And then I'm going to put two events. One is going to be H cross HT, and one is going to be T cross HT. Now these two events are there to model the result of the first toss being head in this case and tail in that case. And the idea is that I don't want to have something like the singleton um, HH that I had here, for instance, inside sigma naught, because that would be the event that the first toss was ahead and the second toss was ahead, but the second toss hasn't happened. So that event that includes second toss being ahead cannot uh, be described at the level or cannot be assigned a probability at the level of uh, sigma naught, at the level of what happened after the first toss of the coin. So now I have a random variable, it takes whatever value it wants to take, so random variable from omega uh, to r. It's obviously sigma measurable because sigma is everything, so every uh, every variable from omega to r will be sigma measurable, and square integrability is going to be irrelevant here uh, because my state space is, is my, my space omega is finite, so every random variable is going to be uh, square integrable. Now, what I want to find is the conditional expectation of x given sigma naught. Now, how do I go uh, about this? I'm going to define a variable y, which is my guess for the conditional expectation, and then I'm going to show that this variable y is sigma naught measurable, obviously it's going to be square integrable, and I'm going to show that it satisfies probability 1.1, and then by uniqueness of conditional expectation, that guess of mine is going to have to be the conditional expectation if it does uh, satisfy 1.1. So what is my guess? Well, I need to define y from omega to r, and then I need to tell you what y of hh is, what y of ht is, uh, and what y of tt, y of th is. There's only four points in my space. So for hh, I'm going to take one half of the value of x at hh and the value of x at ht. Uh, for ht, I'm going to do the same. And then for tt, I'm going to take one half of x of tt plus x of th. And for th, I'm going to define it as the same as tt. So what am I doing here? Um, 
the value of y at hh or ht is just the average of the values of x at hh and ht. That is to say that I don't know what's going to happen on the second toss. I'm just averaging out uh, everything. I don't know. And that is my guess for what the conditional expectation should be. Now, first of all, um, I need to show that this y is sigma not measurable. So let's give a name to this quantity. Let's call this one A and let's call this one B. Now, the situation is slightly different if A is equal to B or if A is not equal to B. Uh, in the case of A not equal to B, what is the inverse image of A? And y can only take two, var two values, A or B. So to check whether or not y is sigma not measurable, I only have to check whether or not the inverse image of the singleton A and the singleton B are in sigma not. Now the inverse image of the singleton A is what? It's HH has the point HH in it and it has the point HT in it, uh, which is really to say it's the set H cross HT. And that's indeed an element of sigma naught. Now, for the inverse image of B, it's the same thing, but I get T cross HT. Okay, and if A were to be equal to B, then what I will have is that the inverse image of A or B, which is the same thing, would be all of omega, and that's also in sigma naught. So Y is sigma naught measurable which is, of course, one of the key property um, for being a conditional expectation. And of course, it's in L2 for omega sigma naught P because being in L2 in this case is not a, a further um, uh, limitation because every random variable on a finite uh, space like this will automatically be squared, uh, integrable with respect to the, the probability measure that I have defined. So what I have to show is one, one. So I need to show that for every A in sigma naught, the integral of A of Y is the same thing as the integral of A of X. And now there's only four possible values for A in sigma naught. So I can check every single one of them. So for A equal the empty set, what is the integral of the empty set of Y? Well, it's zero because the empty set has probability zero. So it doesn't matter what I integrate on the empty set, I get zero. So one, one holds for A equal the empty set. For A equal the full space omega, what is uh, Y? It is, well, Y can only take two values, A and B, on two sets that both have probability one half. So what you get is one half of A plus B which is really the same as one half of, uh, actually one fourth of x of hh plus x of ht plus x of tt plus x of th. But what is that? Uh, it is the full possible value of x multiplied by the probability of the corresponding set, which is one fourth. So this is really the average of x, the integral of x over dp. So probably 1.1 checks out for the empty set and for the full set uh, and for a slightly more interesting set like H cross HT, uh, what have I got for Y? Now this set has two points, HH H and HT, uh, and both points have probability one half. So I get one half of Y of HH plus one half of Y of HT. Uh, y of HH and Y of HT are the same. So this just gives me y of hh and y of hh is one half of x of hh plus x of ht uh, which is exactly the same as the integral over this two point set h cross ht of x dp and exactly in the same way you know the rules of h and t are completely symmetric so i also get that over the last set so what does that mean? It means that y is in L2 of omega sigma naught and satisfies 1.1 and that gives me that y is the conditional expectation 
by uniqueness of conditional expectation. So this example is the simplest possible example of what we're dealing with here. All right, everything is finite. There's only two points in times in one, uh, one sigma, one sub sigma algebra. I condition with respect to that and how do I do it? And that really tells you what conditional expectations are in a sense. Uh, I just average over what I don't know, right? So on the, the set uh, h cross ht, what my variable does is that it looks at what a variable x would do uh, in both possible outcomes of the second toss, and it gives the average of that. And that's typically what conditional expectations look like. And technically checking this property 1.1 here uh, with something that is a good guess for the conditional expectation is in practice the way you're gonna prove that something is um, the conditional expectation that you're looking for. So our definition of conditional expectation is about conditioning on a sub sigma algebra. This is the most general form of conditioning one can do, but, but often in practice one does spatial uh, cases of that. So sometimes you will hear me talk about um, the conditional expectation of x given another random variable x naught. So it's called conditioning over a random variable and the way it works is as follows. If I give you a random variable uh, x naught, now I can talk about the sigma algebra that is generated by x naught, right? The smallest sigma algebra that makes x naught measurable, and that is to say the inverse image by x naught of every um, Boyle set uh, in, in R, if it's a real value sigma algebra. Now, by definition, here is a definition right here, the conditional expectation of a random variable x given a random variable x naught will be just the conditional expectation given the sigma algebra generated by x naught. That's as simple as that. Uh, in the same way, you can condition over an event. Now, an event, a single element of the sigma algebra sigma also generates a sigma algebra. You can talk about the smallest sigma algebra, sigma of a naught, that contains a naught. So to be a sigma algebra, it's gonna have to contain the empty set, it's gonna have to contain omega. Now you want it to contain a naught, but it also needs to be stable undertaking closure to be a sigma algebra. So you need it to contain uh, the complement of a naught. And once you've put this four set, in sigma a naught, then you do have a sigma algebra, and that is the smallest possible one that contains a naught. So you can talk about the conditional expectation of x given the sigma algebra generated by a naught, uh, and you could check exactly as we did in the example, and I very much recommend doing that uh, as an exercise, that what you do uh, is you average your random variable x over a naught, and that is the value of your conditional expectation if you're in a naught, and the value of your conditional expectation if you're not in a naught is the average over x over the complement. So definitely do that as an exercise. Check that it satisfy property 1.1. Now, in a somewhat unfortunate uh, um, yeah, accident of history, the definition for the conditional expectation given an event a naught is not uh, a special case of the general definition. It's a notation for uh, the average value of x on the set a naught. And that's the definition that we have here. So this is a little confusing because Conditional expectations of random variables are random variables. Conditional expectation of random variables given random variables are again random variables. Yet, with this definition that's used very often, the conditional expectation of a random variable given an event is no a number. Just like the standard expectation, uh, which could be seen as the expectation, as the expectation given the event omega, uh, is also a number. 
So we think of expectations as being numbers, expectation given an event as being numbers, but expectations given a random variable or given a sigma algebra being a random variable. So at first, this is a little confusing. Uh, in the end, that is because we think of numbers as being very special cases of random variables, random variables that just happen to be constant. That's the, the probabilistic mentality. In the probabilistic mentality, everything is random. There's no such thing as just an element of R. Everything is a random variable, and the elements of R are seen as random variables that just happen to be constant. Now, notice that this uh, uh, matches up with a definition you've seen before, which is the definition of a conditional probability. Now, the probability of an event B is the expectation of the indicator function of B. Well, exactly in the same way, the probability of an event B given A0 is the conditional expectation of the characteristic or the indicator function of B given the set A0. And if you compute it using formula 1.2, then you go back to the formula you already know for the probability of B given A0 as being the probability of B intersected A0 times the probability of, divided by the probability of A0. So this gives consistency to a whole range of notation and, and variation on the notion of conditioning you might see in other places. Now very often here we'll be uh, conditioning over random variables or over sigma algebras generated by a certain random variable and the very interesting special case of that occurs when the random variable you're conditioning over only takes uh, finitely many value and then you have a more general version of what we're seeing when we're conditioning over an event or, or of what we've seen in the example that the conditional expectation of x given y is going to take finitely many values, exactly as many values as y does, and on the set where y is um, its first value, for instance, you're going to be equal to the average of x over that set. So again, it's this idea that you average over all the events that you can find in your um, sigma algebra that you're conditioning over. Now there's a little proof of that in my note. I suggest you don't quite look at it and you do exactly what we've done in the example. You check that what I've defined here is indeed the conditional expectation. That is to say it's square integrable, it's measurable with respect to the sigma algebra generated by y, uh, and it satisfies property 1.1. That is a very good exercise for you.